Okay. Right. Well, thank you very much for joining. Uh, this is the Marketing Optimist Marketing Sandwich course. I've lost track of how many we've done now because we've we accelerated with the with the event when it kicked off. Um, so today we're going to speak to uh, Lee Jackson, who is uh, a presentation genius. I've known Lee for a long time um, from my better culture days. Uh, Lee, we 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 procured and borrowed and purloined lots of your kit at different times. Um, Lee's a great presenter. I've seen him so many times and every time he's done something amazing and innovative, he's always got lots of great ideas. Um, you've also written several books on it, I believe. Um, and and you've, you've, you've spoken all around the world. And were you the head of the, pers the Professional Speakers Association for a while? Yeah, the, I'm still on the board of the Professional Speaking Association. Uh, and in 2017, I was the national president. So I, I basically, I, for a year, got to lead 620 professional speakers, which is quite an interesting job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet, yeah. So, so, to, so today, obviously, we're all sat on a Zoom call. We can't, nobody can present in face-to-face -face anymore. So the point of this kind of chat is for Lee, who's, a, who's really good at all this stuff. As we've, as before we started the call, we've already found a few little tips from Lee without even starting. Um, <laughs> Then I'll just say to hand, hand over to Lisa so he can talk us through what he'd like to talk about, about online presenting. Um, if anyone's got any questions, if you could just kind of hang on or drop them in the chat and we'll pick up, up on them later. Um, yeah, is that all okay for everybody? Great, let's do it. Over to you then, Lee. Great, well, thank you. I was, I was sort of reflecting, really. I mean, rather than me just do my stuff at you, I thought I'd do a few reflections today, do you know what I mean? And um, sort of get you to think a little bit uh, have a look at what's changed, what's changing, and then I'll to do a bit of stuff, but then I'll just take some questions along the way. So you can press, you can raise your hand inside of uh, Zoom, you can, or you can actually just physically put your hand up as well. We can do that, and, and Richard will help you to bring questions in. Yeah, you can put your hands up, or anything <laughs> that gets attention, but the chat box is useful. But I was, so I was, first of all, I was thinking, um, what has changed in presenting? Because if you're presenting to to, uh, for marketing purposes, because that's often what it is. When I'm the best marketing I can do as a professional speaker is to be on my feet in front of an audience, whether of course that is now virtually like we are now, or whether that is, you know, physically, that's the best thing I can do. So one of my quick stories about that is I was speak, I was doing a motivational talk. I'll tell you a bit more about what I do in, um, in Leeds in a, it was a big public sector event and I've been invited. And to be honest, they didn't pay me a lot of money. It was just a bit. And I was thinking it was one of those things that do I do it? Do I not do it? And I thought, do you know what? It's my hometown. I don't have to drive. I'm just going to go for it. So I took the gig, did a, about a 20 minute presentation in sandwiched in between lots of, um, how can I put it? Um, lots of typical public sector presentations. I know, I think you know what I'm saying. You know, I'm just going to talk you my way through these slides now. And they just went through their bullet points and all the rest of it. So, um, and I obviously stood out because of my style and what I did. And, and uh, a big HR boss came up to me uh, of a large public sector organization and came up to me and they said to me, um, you know, I don't know if you've ever done a talk and you always get like two or three people that want to have a word with you. And you're kind of hoping and praying that they want to have a nice chat to you rather than say can I just uh, talk to you about this because you always get one or two of those people and she came up to me afterwards and it was a lovely conversation and I said, I'll, I'll remember it was a few years ago now and I'll remember I'll never forget it she said to me can you help my staff can you help my team speak like you do is what she said and that turned into what's been probably my, my biggest client over the last few years and I, and I just said to her, uh, yeah, I think I can probably do that. And that's, that was how I started doing presentation coaching, really, is because I, I started to dissect then what, what, have, what, have I, what have I got used to as habit and how can I explain that to other people? And so that's just kind of how it all happened, really. And it was a strange. So being on my feet is the best thing. So if you're in your business, the best thing, and of course the worst thing for your business is to be on your feet. I mean, you can talk to Gerald Ratner about that. And uh, he now makes a good living on the speaker circuit, going around telling people the mistakes he made when he made that funny joke at uh, the after dinner talk many, many years ago, when he said that all of his products were rubbish. 
and 18 months later his business had failed so being on your feet is kind of dangerous and that's why people get nervous about it but also it's the best thing you can do is to be in front of people so getting that right is important and so i was thinking really and uh, maybe i can get a few chip-ins from from people on the, on on this as well but i was thinking what has changed then so what i think has changed is the delivery technology has changed so i'm sat here now in my office and i'm delivering to a camera that's slightly different i'm obviously i've always i've always done this stuff at some level but now it's slightly different because i used to do most of my speaking in front of audiences so that's what's happened and there's also the intensity of close-up video because even if we're presenting a room we're not used to seeing video and all of a sudden i'm staring at myself thinking oh my hair doesn't quite look right and oh my glasses why why do i keep touching my glasses we've got this kind of intensity which i think actors probably get can you imagine if you watch a film you think how close the close-ups are you're thinking that must be horrible to watch but now we're all doing it so there's an intensity about this that we need to uh, sort of get used to and think about we've already been joking the jeremy here about his backgrounds and everything else and you know what's the background and what's behind me and there's that intensity and um and i think we have to plan and think a bit differently as well um like for instance you might have presented with a whiteboard so you might have used a flip chart or a whiteboard now with a flip chart people spend three days on a flip chart where a flip chart doesn't really work on zoom because you'll end up just turning your back and then writing on a flip chart so some of our comfort blankets have been taken away i think richard that's what's been interesting in this whole process so a little, little tip from a friend yesterday that i got which i'm definitely going to use because my wife is a community english teacher and she's got loads of these is to get a little you know like a little whiteboard you can get them for a couple of pounds yep. um or if you go to a pound shop, they'll cost you a pound. Oh, look at Jeremy. Yeah, he's got one. <laughs> he's got one. <laughs> I'm a football coach. Carry them with me. There you go. Because if you get a double-sided one, you can just write stuff on there and show it to the screen and then flip it over and write stuff. So that gives you that. So things have changed. You can't just use a flip chart because no one would read it unless the pen was about that thick. They would just look a bit strange, you know. Um, and also, I think, um, yeah, like our favourite, if you did workshops and training and stuff like your favorite games are not going to necessarily work anymore like I've, i spent most of my life being a dj and um when you're a dj you you have a <laughs> when you're a dj you always have like three or four records like as your emergency records so if the gig's going really badly or no one's dancing you think all right okay house of pain jump around right okay get, get that bad boy on right that was one of my emergency records right and you do the same thing when you're training or speaking you've all of a sudden you've got that game that you know will really work and so you take that but when but then you all of a sudden you're thinking oh but does that work on zoom call will that work online because you know it's it's tricky isn't it so we've lost that and lastly i think what else has changed well i think attention spans have changed now everyone on here appears to be in the meeting which is nice but you get these meetings and then the people go they blank their video and you think okay are they just checking the emails are they going to the toilet are they putting the kettle on you know and sometimes you can hear this stuff happening in the background so you there's all sorts of things i think that have changed really so so it, it, let me open it up to you guys um and you are all guys i think today uh, which is unusual uh, but what do you think's changed in presenting first of all i was just checking everyone's still here and there's nobody nobody's put a cardboard cut out in front that's, <laughs> that's good um i think for for me it, when you're doing a when i when i've been training or doing a presentation or whatever you, you can read the room a lot better i don't know or, or you can even actually let's take that back so you can kind of ignore a piece of the room i know when when we do better culture we aren't you're on a stage and you can kind of pan around the room and you can ignore awkward people or people who are going to put you off when you're doing a zoom call there's nowhere to hide. Everyone's looking at you. Yeah. Um, so there's nowhere that you, your gaze is, is tricky, and to look around and work out where people are is 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 quite difficult. Um, yeah, and I, I think uh, yeah, I think that that's 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 the main thing for me that's 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 changed. Well, anybody else got any 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 thoughts? I I'm actually doing a weekly uh, webinar, and also it's for people who I don't know. 
So whilst I'm doing a day, we're doing a daily Zoom meeting with people we know and we can make allowances for people you know. I'm presenting weekly to people who I don't particularly know and I particularly move around a lot when I'm presenting to keep the attention of people forwards, back, around, whiteboard. Not So I'm a very physically moving person and that way I can kind of check who's watching me and who's not wanting to be there. So you're right, there's none of the signals there um, when you've just got this screen and people static, uh, so I find that a bit, a bit, a bit of a challenge. Yeah. yeah, for me, my style is a lot to do with the old group work and proper facilitation. So, it, so I'm um, luckily I'm familiar with the difference of technology and breakout rooms and whiteboards. And yes, the principle is anything that I would have done face to face live, I can transfer it online. But for me, it's more about um, my comfortableness. We're doing that is is the big yeah. change. That's that's what I find the yeah. challenge. It just doesn't feel the same that they're getting the same learning experience. So I've got all that interference going on all the time. Yeah, that's a good point. So let me show you one thing that's changed. You probably wonder, you probably think, why is Lee sitting down? Why is that camera so high? There's a reason for that. Let me give you one tip that immediately changes everything. I'm sitting down now. So this is what I so I think we should sit down for meetings and we should stand up to present. So I'm gonna stand up. So I'm gonna get rid of my chair. I'm gonna literally flip the laptop up and you can see just a bit of my background. I'll try and get the background in there. So if I was actually presenting properly, I can actually do it standing up. I've got a stand up desk here, but you, you, I've used an ironing board with a box on it. Someone was telling me that the ironing board, but actually, can you see how the energy's changed as soon mm. as I stand up? Yeah. All of a sudden it's like, so it's sit down to meet, stand up to teach. That's what I'm learning now. So that's why I just did that little weird thing there was sitting down because my backdrop is not, is not off putting. It's just me. So then I can sort of see you and I'm, I mean, it's, it's helpfully fallen that I'm at the top of the screen here so I can see all of you now. So I can keep an eye on you as if I'm actually presenting. My hands look really big if I do that. That's a bit weird. So I don't, <laughs> My big, you know, like Kenny Everett, I've got the big hands. So be little things like that are a bit are a bit strange. But but it's just nice to be able to stand up, actually. And a, a couple of things I've done in the last few weeks, because uh, I really miss being in front of an audience, not for egotistical reasons. It's just because that's probably where I shine. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's what I like to do. So this is, I guess, the closest thing I can get. But also it means that I just feel a bit more energized. And it's different. So I would give you five minutes of stuff like this five or ten minutes and then sit down and let's discuss it because I, th I think one of the biggest things that's changing one of the biggest things that's changing is that we need to be a little bit more interactive because no one's really unless no one's really going to listen to me for an hour but they would at a conference they'd listen to me for 40 minutes or an hour for a conference but they wouldn't actually you know they wouldn't you wouldn't do that on zoom because you'd have find something else to do you know, something else would happen, like someone, someone's just walked into the Stuart's room there. So I've noticed. So you, things just happen, right? Things just happen. Yeah, yeah. And so you get distracted. So I understand. So start, yeah. So sit down, sit down to meet, stand up to teach is one of the things that I'm learning more and more. But, uh, yeah. sorry, like, uh, right? no, w w one of the tips that I would have, and if I was being you in this meeting, uh, th that was my daughter that just came in. And yeah. she's actually made me an on-air sign <laughs> yes. that I pin to the door um, when I'm actually doing this. I think it's slightly different if you're the kind of participant like this, but if I'm running it, yeah, yeah. on-air sign would have been up. Yeah, very good. Yeah, I've got two signs on my office door. Yeah, two like, kind of do not disturb type signs. I think one of them I might have nicked from a hotel room, I think, off the door of a hotel room. <laughs> but that's an on-air sign. That would be really good. That's a yeah, great that's idea. A good idea. It's, it's a good point, actually. Um, Lee, I'm doing. Um, I normally do a social media masterclass that takes a whole a whole day, and I'm yep. rerunning it on uh, Wednesday, and I'm I'm condensing it into three hours because my thought was I can't do a whole day Zoom. It's going to drive me insane and yep. other people insane. Um, so actually, when I when I'm going to do that on on Wednesday, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to stand up when I do the presenting bit. I'm going to I'm going to give that a go. But have you got any other tips on? Yeah, how to how to manage what what, what I've condensed in, into something long into something a bit more useful. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, well, when I work with people on a one-to-one -one basis, and they, they often come in to come to me with a presentation, so they'll say, "This is my presentation. Can you help me to make it better?" <clears throat> and one hundred percent of the people that I've worked with put too much stuff into a presentation, mm. right? And you put how many how many conferences how many conferences have you been to where someone says, "Oh, I, I, do you mind if I just overrun? I'll just keep going." And they, it's because they're just trying to get through these slides. So, so one of the tips is. You've only got two options. One is to speak faster, and the other one is to remove content. So you've got to, from a more basic point of view, Richard, is just remove some content. Yeah. And, and then that can become notes or a PDF or an exercise afterwards, but you have to remove. So, so if you're doing a social media masterclass, you might choose to concentrate on the holy trinity of LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Yeah. You might not want to spend much time on TikTok or Snapchat or whatever. Do you yeah, know what I mean? We, yeah, we tend to skip that one anyway. <laughs> but, yeah, but it's, 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 it's a good point. Obviously, I have, I'm not trying to condense a whole day into three hours because it's just not possible. So I, I am cutting out lots of, lots of stuff. But you'd, um, you'd be amazed at how many people try to do that, though. Yeah, yeah. Is they just, they just condense it. Oh, this is my two-hour workshop. I've only got an hour to do. So I'm just going to run through it really quick. Yeah. And it's like, no, no, you've got you to ditch the stuff. So this is my, so for example, I do this in, on my course that I do. So when I do a whole day course, I give people this little postcard. It's amazing people love postcards. Even now, I guess, you know, it's slightly different, but I will make some virtual ones. But th that's my whole course. That's my whole day course on a postcard. Because I, I say to them, if I, if I can't, you know, if I can't take on my own teaching, it's nonsense, isn't it? So I say, yeah, well, yeah. look, I've, I've spoke to you for six hours today. You've done loads of exercises, but just remember those five things. And so that's my whole day on a postcard. So that, that is, so that's one of my key, that's one of my key tips always is to get to the core of your message. Because once, once we know the one thing we want people to walk away with, then it makes all the planning and everything so much simpler. But what people do, the reason they do death by PowerPoint is because what they're doing is what academics do and they're telling people everything about that subject. So if someone is an expert in physics, you know, on refraction of light, what they tend to do is tell you everything about refraction of light because that's what an academic would do. But in, another, in another, another presentation, what we have to do is decide what's the one thing you want them to walk away with. If you can only remember one thing from that social media masterclass, what's the one thing? Have you worked that out, Rich? All of it is locked there. Now I know, I know, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, so, like for instance, I would, off the top of my head, I would say uh, regularity, post on a regular basis, maybe. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Probably, probably the key takeaway is going is to be planning. Is is plan right. your content, right. cool. and that way you can make it regular and consistent, and all those other things. Yeah. yeah. The consistent um, planning, that kind of thing. So that's yeah. a good idea. Um, so, but once once you get to that point of of getting to the core of your message, it changes the way you plan and it changes the way you present. Because when, when, I, when I do that now, I've, so like doing a presentation skills course in person or online, I can do that in a day, in half a day. And I've done all of these. I've done, I've done a day, a two, a two day, a one day, which is my main one, a half day, a two hour, a 90 minutes, an hour. And I've even done it in 15 minutes. But when I know what the core of my message is, I can do the 15 minute one really easily yeah. because I make sure I tell them the three things that they need to know, not the 74 things basically. Yeah. It was one from, so from, uh, from years ago when I first met you, when we did better culture, <coughs> and I don't know if anyone's ever heard of better culture, it still, it still knocks around, but the core idea of that was that you could come and talk about anything, but you only had five minutes. So there was five minutes and the slides ran automatically. So you could not run over. Um, and what that did is it got people to just to really drill down to exactly what they're talking about because they didn't have time to waffle. They didn't have time to put loads of comment, loads of bullet points on a slide because it was going to change every 30 seconds. You just didn't have the time. It was amazing how many people got caught out by that or just come with their own slide deck or they'd say, can I use my own click? It's like, no, 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 it's five minutes and I start it and it stops. <laughs> um, but, it, but actually it's a really, it's a really good, um, it was a really good um, way of being able to condense your message down into what's the key that I have to tell people? Cause I've only got five minutes. I can't waffle. And what, and what, one of the reasons that I kept being involved in better culture 
Not only because you kept stealing my projector, Richard. <laughs> we but, returned uh, every yes. time. <laughs> and microphones. But the, one of the reasons I kept doing it was, for me as a professional speaker, it was a real challenge to do anything in five minutes. So I, I probably did about four or five presentations. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and I kept doing them because I wanted to test myself. Okay, Lee, this is your hour talk. Can you deliver that in front of people in a pub, basically, in a pub in five minutes? And so for me, it was like, yeah, I've got to do it. So that was getting to the core of the message. And there were some amazing talks, but there were mm -hmm. some really bad ones where people kept, was, saying, yeah. people kept saying, oh, no, oh, no, I haven't finished. I haven't. And it's just like, well, just keep going. Just keep going. Yeah. Anyway, how long have we got, by the way? How long do you want me to talk? I've forgotten to ask you that. Um, that's all right. So we've got a, kind of another 10, 15 minutes. Okay. It... Shall I give you a couple more tips and I'll take some questions? Is that all right? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. So um, the other thing is uh, that uh, when you're doing stuff online, <clears throat> uh, eye level is by level. So where your eyes go are really important. And I, st I have struggled with this and I continue to do that. But look, if you look right now, I'm looking at the camera. And if I look at the camera, you will f it will make you feel like I'm presenting to you. But if I start looking at Stuart's picture or Jeremy, can you see how, how it drops? So one of the things I've learned, if you've got a meeting with some people, you can actually adjust the box in Zoom so, it, so if your webcam is at the top of the screen, like this one is, so I'm just using my inbuilt Mac one today, but I've got a different one. What I would do is put the Zoom meeting to the top of the screen. So, okay. put, so it's just underneath the camera. So I'm not looking down, I'm always looking up, and it makes you feel like you connect a lot more with people. So eye level is by level really in that way. So make that eye connection. And um, the other thing that I think Jeremy was saying, you, you, you like to walk around, you're probably quite got a lot of arm movements, all that kind of stuff, Jeremy, haven't you? Which is brilliant, and that's what, <laughs> and that's what I do. But um, the problem with the Zoom, of course, is it chops off a lot of your body, so you lose a lot of your um, body language and stuff. So do use your hands a little bit, and also use some props as well. So I've got some props here. This is one of my favourite bell. So, so I. But all of a sudden, someone has seen you a prop on Zoom. They're like, oh, no one's used a prop on Zoom. Of course. And I used one the other day. I was telling a story the other day, and I used this one. Because I wanted to make a real point, and I put big batteries in it, and it cost you a fortune. But I, may, I use a loud hailer. Because this is the important bit. So if you've got some props, you might want to use those as well. Just, I think what's happened is because people get stuck at their desk, then they throw out everything else that they used to use. Well, actually, you probably, you, we've probably all used props. I've seen you use props, Richard. Yeah. Pick up stuff and use stuff. So uh, there, there's a couple of little tips. And um, uh, yeah, one last, uh, well, I've, one last tip before I open it up. Um, tame the technology, <laughs> okay? Because you're going to have to do this, you, we haven't got a, an excuse now not to tame the technology. So we have to learn the technology. I've spent the last few weeks learning Zoom particularly and learning how it works, learning the extra stuff. Because if you don't tame the technology or you haven't got a mate who can come on with you and help you, you're going to be in real trouble. Mm -hmm. Because what you don't want to do is, oh, oh, no, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, just hang on a sec. No, oh, no, my video's off. Um, hang on a sec. No. <laughs> and your, your microphone then goes off and you want to just be able to tame that. Tame. So you, we've got no choice. I've got friends of mine who would happily call themselves Yorkshire Luddites. I don't do, I haven't got a phone, I don't do technology. And over the last few weeks, they've had no choice but to start doing Zoom calls and, and Skype and everything else. So we, we, we need to accelerate. And this is the one of the, if we can take anything out of this crisis right now, and that is that we have accelerated the use of technology. Yeah. And that's going to really help us. I think it's going to save me a lot of time on trains and in the car because I think more and more stuff is going to be on video. And uh, that's going to really help me. So they, I could go on all day. So I'm just going to stop, maybe take some questions or comments from everyone else, Richard. Yeah, so let's just have a look in there. Uh, so Russell, Russell from other side of Leeds sent him a message. Hi. It's like doing a radio show. That's why I quite enjoy this. It's kind of <laughs> these people. So Russell, you said, what are a couple of habits that surprise you when you first, when you dissected your approach? You know, right at the start when you were talking, you were sort of said I, I broke it down and all my behaviours and habits. I'm just wondering, is there something that you were doing? You went, huh, do you realise? Oh, that was good. 
Yeah, the, the best coach you'll ever get is to video yourself when you're presenting, <clears> which is obviously really obvious now because you're videoing this so I can watch it if I really want to. But uh, videoing yourself live as well, that just, it turns all the lights on in your head. And I hate every minute of it. If you like watching videos of yourself, you'd be weird, yeah. wouldn't you? Because it's horrible. But all of a sudden you think, oh, look how big I was then. Look at, look at my, I was really engaging with it. Oh, that worked really well. And then like, what am I doing there? I keep touching my, I keep touching my ear. And you see, I see, I have people doing this. And, yeah, and, or they've got like a really miserable resting face that I, <laughs> it's that kind of Northern bloke resting face, which I think I've got a bit of, whereas I'm like, <laughs> on, on a stage, that's really bad. So I have to not only get the eye level thing, but actually be smiling and animated because that makes a big difference. And I think the difference between TV and presenting, if you ever go on TV, it's horrible when the camera's this close to you. Yeah. And you have to keep what, smiling. What do you think to headsets when presenting? You know, in terms of technology wise, I get people are sort of nagging me to go get the USB headset. So I don't really know actually how I'm coming across now with just the computer audio. Fine. Yeah, it sounds fine to me, Russell. Um, you seem you seem fine. If you already, I mean, I basically invest in technology. I would say now is the time to do that technology. So I've got a, I've got a mic here. If I can take it off without making it falling off, so you haven't noticed. But I've got a fully yeah. professional Rode mic here, which is plugged in. I use that for my podcasts um, and everything. But it's plugged in here. It's off screen, so you can't see. I have to put a little weight on it. It's sort of falling down. Uh, the problem with the headset is it on video. It looks a bit weird, and the yeah, the sound quality of a headset can be can be really bad. Um, so I do have a headset. A headset. I've used a headset, but now I'm going for a decent mic, and uh, I just listen, I listen to the sound off off a little speaker, or just off the. It's just coming out of my laptop now, and the sound's fine. Yeah, yeah. Because if you okay. get a good if you get a good mic, it doesn't pick up that sound. You see, because the mic's facing forward. Um, I think so, sometimes a, a, a headset can can help. Um, because you don't get as much feedback, that can be. A, that's why I've got kind of just a little, tiny, small pair of earphones in, so I can hear. I can hear you, but I'm not getting a kind of a loop. Yeah. No, I think I'm going to use headsets more for the the virtual sessions I do. Uh, that's just uh, helpful. But yeah, the presenting piece. I I didn't really like the idea of doing it on the presenting piece. Yeah. Cool. Um, I think I think Peter, you have a question. It's just on the on the microphone side of things. I've I've been trying to figure this. So I'm. Uh, I, I agree with you, Lee. I've set my room up so my laptop's back, and I can then actually move and, and everything, and walk around the room. Yeah. Um, and then I suddenly realised that the microphone's on the laptop, and so I I've literally just bought these, so just the little AirPods, just because these I can then move anywhere around the room, and and nobody nobody mm -hmm. could, will take any, any difference on the on the, the level of the voice. Also, it means I can hear anything. They're also sound cancelling, so if I did want to, I could put both ears in and then also cancel out everything else that's going on in the house. So the microphone won't pick up that stuff, but I'm still getting distracted by kids kind of running up and down the stairs. And so to suddenly put these in, I get locked into the world, and also it means I can I can kind of move all around and it doesn't lose the quality on it. Um, John Lewis, click and collect. So yeah. we've got it around the corner. It's the next day delivery. It's brilliant. Book it before eight o'clock. Um, yeah. And it's a really, it's a real big winner. I've got some AirPods as well that I bought them, but I tried to connect them to my laptop and they sounded terrible. I don't know why. It's maybe the settings aren't right on it, but um, it's probably your, your sound pretty clear though, Peter. So I'm not quite sure. Maybe I've got the wrong ones or something. I don't know, but um, yeah. And Peter, have you just got one? You've only got one in. I've only got one in now. Yeah, and yeah, the reason yeah. being, and, and most of the time I'm planning to only put one in, just because when I, I find, so I've also got Beats, because my other option before I bought them was to, to put the Beats around my neck and the microphone on the Beats would pick it up. Hmm. But even with that, I then couldn't hear anything until I suddenly kind of became all encompassed. Um, and so I, I just find it really good because now I can hear how I'm coming across. Uh, it doesn't kind of lock me into, into my own head, which beats can often do when you're, when you're talking. Um, and okay. also it means that if one runs out, then I've got the battery on the other one to stick it in. <laughs> and it means I can keep going for days. So, so it's a, it'd be a good purchase to make. 
Yeah, it's just that idea of taming the technology. So whatever you choose, choose it and work it out well. I've worked out now with calls to my friend that this microphone is perfect and doesn't feed back as well. No, so, the quality is really good. Yeah, so we're not getting that loop back. So that's fair enough. But it's, it's a decent microphone. I, I, I will try the AirPods, actually, and, and work those out. I've not tried to work them out myself. It's a, it's a Yorkshire question, Lee. How much for the microphone? Uh, so uh, you, there's the road do two quality USB mics. Uh, and I think you're on in the region of 100 to 120 pounds. But but believe me, everyone goes for the for this microphone called the Blue Orb or something. There's different ones. Blue Yeti, this one here. There you go. The Blue Yeti is, is a good mic. It's cheaper than this oh, there one. There we go. There you go. Yeah, yeah the Blue. But it, uh, trust me, the Rode one is of better quality. But 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 I, I recorded audio books and stuff with it, so I've gone for a slightly better quality mic. Yeah. Uh, and stuff like that. But, I uh, see. I see. Peter's got his hand up again. Oh, he's he's keen. He's keen. Oh, unmute him. Oh, there we go. That's if I can unmute myself in time when I talk. Um, I think the the thing that that's really got me, um, and the reason why I've re redone the whole room so as I can, like you say, Lee, kind of get up and move around, is because actually we don't really know how long this is going to go on for. No. Um. And I just kind of really want to encourage you to invest and actually see it as a, a, an investment rather than as a thing that you have to buy. Because actually we could be here for another three months, six months, maybe more. Um, and then you suddenly start thinking, hang on, if I'm doing one of these a week, two of these a week, then actually you, you'll get frustrated if you don't have the right thing that works for you, I think is, yeah. is the important part. I think I think as I think as just to kind of add to that, even if even if the lockdown changes and something we're all allowed out in two weeks' time, I think there's a uh, there's a societal societal shift in that people will, is going to be really wary to be doing face to face and big uh, office meetings again and classroom meetings again for a long time. So regardless, even if we, even if lockdown comes off. I don't think this is going away anytime soon. So I think it's really important to get it right. And it's worth investing and I agree. I've done quite a lot of research on the lockdown type stuff because I guess you got to, haven't you? Um, and the, the, uh, the, there will be a staged, whatever time they stop it, it'll be a staged return. So the last thing, the last thing to be allowed will be large conferences, large gatherings, football stadiums. There'll be a staged return. We'll be allowed to meet in groups of 10, Groups of twenty, then maybe some local churches, you know, groups of a hundred, whatever. They'll be, and then and then it'll be some business call. But I, I, but my friend was telling me, he works in the events industry like I do, and he was saying event event professionals for larger events now, they twenty twenty is a write off for them now. They're planning for twenty twenty one, because they don't think a lot of comedians have just said, oh, I'll just do my tour in September. And I think that might be a little naive. I think we might be looking into next year. Sadly. Uh, for larger events or larger conferences like I speak at and stuff, you know, so sadly, yeah. but there you go. I, I, I do think that's going to affect more, even smaller gatherings, even, even what, because like people, when once restaurants and things open again, people are going to be like, well, I, I'm dying to go back to a restaurant. I'm personally dying to go back to a restaurant and have somebody serve me food, but it's going to be, they're going to have to spread everything out a lot more. Just people, that, yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking today, well, I grabbing a quick sandwich before I came on, I was thinking, I'm really bored of eating the same stuff. <laughs> yeah. Heinz yeah. tomato soup it loses its luster after a while, boys, isn't it? <laughs> it does a little bit. It does. Uh, how long have we got, Richard? I'll give you a couple more tips. You want? Um, yeah. Does anyone else have, have any more questions for Lee? Yeah. Uh, the tips are great. So just a couple more of those would be awesome. Yeah, sure. Um, first thing, uh, lots of lot of things have changed, like we said, but some things haven't changed. And one thing is that we still need to do our preparation. So whether you're preparing for a meeting or whether you're preparing to present or train or whatever, <clears throat> or even to pitch, still do your preparation. And one of the biggest tips I tell people, it, even though I'm a geek and I love microphones and laptops and I love all that stuff, get away from your laptop and get onto some paper or a whiteboard behind this black screen here, which incidentally is a blind from Ikea. That is my backdrop. It's a blind from Ikea. <laughs> behind that is a massive big whiteboard. Get on a whiteboard, plan in an analog format. Don't plan in front of PowerPoint or Prezi or whatever you use, or Keynote like me, but get onto some paper, use some cards, use some post-it notes, 
spread these things out, get your ideas out onto these and then do that. Cause it's amazing how many people, you know, people say I'm, I'm, I'm on my computer too much. Well, if you're preparing something, post-it notes are ideal for preparation. And I love using post-it notes and then you can use technology later. Um, that's one tip. Um, oh yeah. The, the, the biggest thing that you can walk away from today, maybe the second biggest thing is to stand up, stand up to teach, sit down to meet the biggest thing I want you to take away from today, as is always in anything I ever present, tell more stories tell more stories if you're pitching for work tell stories you know you can give them the, you can give them the, the profit and loss accounts you can give them the proposal you can do anything any financial stuff you don't have to do that on a screen but tell stories of the people that you've affected the clients that you've helped to propel their business people you've helped to save money or to make money people that you've helped tell more stories just collect stories do it on a permanent basis collect your stories i collect stuff all the time on cards, on a, on my iPhone, I've got little notes that just says all of my stories. And anytime something happens, I just write it down. At the moment, I'm writing down slightly less than I did before because I'm, <laughs> I'm meeting less people. But even what, what Stuart said, Stuart said his daughter walks in and gives him an on-air sign. I write that down. I said, oh, what a great thing. It's a nice tip for me. I'll take that away. If I don't write it down, I'll forget it. So write down the stuff that happens to you write down your stories and just tell stories because people storytelling is the world's oldest profession, not prostitution <laughs> It's story storytelling, right? People just tell us we've told stories for generations and we go to a business, we do a business presentation and people do chalk and talk or the equivalent of that, which is death by PowerPoint. And they're just looking at stuff going, I just want to tell you this. I want to tell you this. And then let me tell you this. And people just saying, tell us, tell us how, not, not the year your business started, because we're not in, no one's interested in that stuff. I started in 1995, and then two years later, I took on someone else, and no one's interested in that stuff. What we want to do is, how have you changed people, made profit, saved money, all that kind of stuff. So collect your stories. And I know Richard's a great storyteller, because I keep <laughs> seeing, I keep seeing all of his stuff. Not, not just about beer and Sheffield, but he does tell other stuff. <laughs> Because you, you tell client stories, Richard, don't you? That's important. Yeah, 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 I do. I've, um, I've, I've given a few presentations, and when people come up to me afterwards to ask a question, it's generally the fact that they've um, recognised the character of a story as them. And they've said to me, you know that story you were telling about that couple? Well, I'm that couple, so will you help me? And you're absolutely oh. right. Case, case studies, as we call them, or stories that people, that's what they resonate with, that human... That human uh, yeah. Uh, are you in marriage guidance or something, Jeremy? I don't know what you do. So. Uh, I give talks on the funding landscape and um, I show people different ways. And what I'm saying is whenever I'm presenting, the people that come up and ask afterwards, um, they, they always engage with the stories I've told. That's great. Yeah, because uh, a friend of mine called Clive Gott was not around anymore. He, he, he called them the me too moments. And I learned from him earlier, you, you make an audience think, oh, me too. All the time I'm telling stories. I use a lot of Victoria Wood type, uh, I call them Victoria Woodisms, little micro stories that she used to be so good at telling. Watch Dinner Ladies. Dinner Ladies is a, is a masterclass in micro storytelling. And throughout Dinner Ladies and, and throughout her stand-up, people like Victoria Wood and stuff would, would be aiming for those Me Too moments. Peter Kay's made his whole career on Me Too moments. <gasps> yeah, we used, to have a, we used to have a TV without a remote control. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my, my dad takes coffee, mate, in, you know, in his suitcase, and it looks like heroin when we go traveling. You know, he, <laughs> he, goes, he goes for those little moments all yeah. the time. So, yeah, that's what stories do. They create those me too moments. So, yeah, good point, Jeremy. Good point. And Excellent. Are we done, or do you want one more? Uh, uh, go, if you've got, you got one more in the tank, let's have it, Lee. One more, one more. Be yourself. Right. Even, you've got to be professional, okay? So be careful what's behind you in your office and be uh, virtually or when you're up front, you know, dress the right way, but be yourself. Let your characters, because people buy from people. It's a big cliche, but it's true, isn't it? You know, people buy, they want to connect with somebody. You know, I've walked out of car, of, out of car showrooms when I've thought, oh, I don't like that car salesman, but I've bought a car and I brought other products from people who I like. So connect, be yourself. 
allow your personality, tell personal stories in a business setting that are relevant, not random things that go nowhere, but use even personal stories in the business setting. So there you go. I could talk all day, so I'll stop Richard and uh, let you wrap it up. <laughs> all right. No, I'm not. Afraid. Well, th thank you very much, Lee. That's been fantastic. And I'm pretty sure everyone's got tips and tips and ideas from that. Um, I'm definitely standing up on Wednesday. In fact, my next my next webinar, which is tomorrow, I'll be standing up on that. Um, so, to so tomorrow's webinar is with uh, Chris Allen from Blacks. Um, he'll be talking, covering a little bit of law and also talking about how he's kind of coped, um, how, how he's coped kind of changes in his business. Um, so it'd be great to see you all on that one as well. Chris is a Chris is a proper. He's like me, Lee. Is he is a Yorkshire? So you don't get. In fact, he's more Yorkshire than me. You don't get much more Yorkshire than me. But Chris definitely manages it. Wow. Um, I, so, I thought you're the most Yorkshire person I've ever met, Richard. You've not met Chris Allen yet, then have you? <laughs> <laughs> he's, beyond, he's he's like proper Yorkshire. Right, guys. So uh, so hopefully I'll see you all soon. This will be. I'm, I've recorded it, so this will be on YouTube this afternoon, and I'll share it out so you can all have a you can all have a good look. But uh, thank you very much. See you Thanks, later. Rich. No worries. Bye bye. If I can help you, just get in touch. LeeJackson.biz, LeeJackson.biz. Just get in touch with me. Always happy to chat. Absolute pleasure, gentlemen. Absolute pleasure. Lovely. Thanks a lot. Cheers, guys. Bye bye. Thanks.